What's up, YouTube? I just got some incredibly good tech information. I can now record with my good microphone. So this is the first video Ask Stevie show that has quality audio. And I should be able to just go ahead right over here and record in my audacity. However, I've got to find the podcast question for today, which is, how do we explore emotional attachment versus sexual experience? So I'm going to paste it before I record so I can read it. How do we explore emotional attachment versus sensual experience? I'm probably going to keep the question to attachment versus experience, but still a good question. So let's go. We're recording in video. Yep, yeah, let's go to the audio platform. Imagine that intro music in my head. <clears throat> Good morning. Can you hear the birds chirping? It's a beautiful day today here. We have a great question. That question is, how do we explore emotional attachment versus sensual experience? How do we explore emotional attachment versus, versus sensual experience? And to simplify, I'm going to answer the question to attachment versus experience. How do we explore attachment versus the need to explore the world and see things and feel things and live? And I had a radical reframe. I was Buddhist, by the way. I converted to Buddhism at age 13 after two years of atheism. And I always knew, I, I'm sorry, I was always an atheist, even while I was a Buddhist. So I was a secular Buddhist. I was the kind of Western Buddhist that had a secular spirituality. If you know Sam Harris, this is the kind of spiritual atheism I embraced. So I had always shamed attachment. <clears throat> if you're familiar with Buddhism, one of the core tenets is that attachment is the root of all suffering. So I think my psychologist, when I was 19 years old, maybe 2021, 20, I'm not sure exactly when in therapy this happened. But she reflected back to me. Well, it's not about attachment being bad, Stephen. I mean, this is a realm of interdependence. She didn't say that. But in my head, I realized, oh, this is a realm of interdependence. Because of what she said next, which is, it's about healthy attachment versus unhealthy attachment. Meaning that you have to attach. Babies attach to their mother and parents to protect them. That's beautiful, healthy attachment. Children detach from their parents as they go to college. The birds are going crazy right outside my window. They are loving this episode. <laughs> and you can attach to something in an unhealthy way too. Addiction is just unhealthy attachment that's used to buffer trauma, for instance. You can detach unhealthily too. If you ghost people all the time, you probably have a healthy detachment issue. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that, that was a, I'm gonna leave that voice crack in the episode just because I think it sounds so funny. Um, <laughs> anyway, experience can be embraced when you know what unhealthy and healthy attachment look like for you and you know what unhealthy attachment and unhealthy detachment look like for you. So with that knowledge in hand, you can go out forth into the world and meet people and places and things that inspire you, entertain you, teach you delight you 
and a manner of assorted varieties. Point being, you can do that only when you know how you attach to things healthily and how you detach to things healthily. I always said a red flag is not being able to let go. And you'll notice folks in society that sometimes cause other people to feel miserable a lot, they have trouble letting go. Those little misery generators that we all know and love. So practice letting go. Maybe you have to write about it. Maybe you have to journal it out. Maybe you need to make a song or a piece of art or paint a picture. Maybe you got to go for a drive on an old road that you love. Maybe you need to talk to a certain person. It's okay. Whatever it is, there's no shame in doing what you have to do to let go. It's the folks that refuse to let go and internalize it and aim that obsession inwards when it becomes problematic. So let go. And then attach to things healthily, <clears throat> which typically looks like slowly. If you become best friends with somebody overnight, that's typically unhealthy. If you find yourself in a situation where all of a sudden you're just sharing way too much information with a person, that could look like unhealthy attachment. If you find yourself going from interdependence into codependence, where you need each other just to function and feel happy and feel alive and present, or excessive independence where you shut each other out for long periods of time, neither of those is interdependent. So that's another way of identifying whether your attachments are healthy. And it can be a person, a food, a substance, a, a pet, a friend, you know, a lover. And then healthy detachment looks like involving the other person in your process of letting go up to a certain point and then not involving them in the process of letting go anymore after that point. And where that point is, is up to you. But the point is, don't just ghost every single person you shot out of your life. Don't just ghost every single person you have to say goodbye to. Some people need to be ghosted. That's their lesson. That's their karma. Do it. I don't care. Some people, you're the one avoiding involving them in that letting go a little bit. Hey, I'm going to miss you a lot. This really feels scary for me. I wish you the best. Hope I can, you know, move on from this. That's vulnerability. That's okay. That helps you detach healthily. And then the second piece is don't involve them after, you know, in the letting go process, right? If it's eight months later, if it's eight years later, don't reach out and say, oh man, I still really wish we could still hang out like we used to. That's no, you need to let go of the past. You know what I mean? So you can involve them in your life now. Hey, what are you up to? This is what I'm up to. Holy shit. You have a family. That's amazing. I don't yet, but I'd like one. So I'm really inspired by that. You know what I'm saying? So Having that guideline will help you delineate healthy attachment and be able to experience anything you want in the best, most grounded way possible for you. Thank you for tuning in and take care. <clears throat> I realized the gain on my mic was up way freaking higher than it's like ever been. So... <laughs> I'm not entirely sure how this is going to sound, but I hope you enjoy it, YouTube. And if you want to check the comments description out below, I would love that. Thank you.